Hi everyone, my name is Bogdan and welcome to Acura Addicted channel dedicated to helping you navigate in the world of automotive repairs, maintenance and reviews. And today I'd like to talk about the future. The future is now, old man. Okay, calm down, buddy. It's not as now as you think it is. Who are you anyway? I'm you, but from the future. From the land of love, where people have time to care. Where everybody is equal, and we all tell the truth. Okay? So, the reason why I wanted to make this video was because I'm really sick and tired of this BS coming from all around on how electric vehicles are taking over the world and how self-driving cars are just around the corner. First of all, let me start by saying that I'm not a so-called petrol head. I'm not advocating that the only true propulsion for cars is an internal combustion or a diesel engine. Nor am I saying that fully self-driving cars are never going to become a reality of our everyday lives. But more on that later. Now contrary to the popular belief, electric vehicles are well far off in the future as far as mass adoption is concerned. And there are two main reasons for that. The most important one is the cost. An electric vehicle costs significantly more than its rival of the same class, equipment and mile range with an internal combustion engine. Let's take a budget EV example. Nissan Leaf. It's the best-selling electrical vehicle in the world as of filming this video. The price tag starts at a whopping $30,000 and goes all the way up to $36,000. The second reason is the driving range. In the base model, you only get 150 miles or 240 kilometers range and a basic set of equipment. Now don't get me wrong. 150 miles are totally enough for most of daily driving for an average person living in an urban area. That should be enough for going to and back from work, doing some groceries and some extra driving if needed during an average day. However, you can forget about going somewhere more or less distant out of town without a hassle of plotting a map where you can get your vehicle charged quickly. And I think you can pretty much abandon the idea of going camping somewhere with no electricity access of any kind, or cross-country journey without a headache of searching for a station after station to keep charging your car. Now let's see how much would an internal combustion engine vehicle of a similar class cost. We don't need to go too far. Meet Nissan Versa, a comparable sized car that starts at half the price of the Leaf and costs $18,000 for the top train. Fuel economy is 35 mpg or 7 liters per 100 kilometers combined. On its 11 gallon or 41 liter fuel tank, it will go as far as 375 miles or 600 kilometers. And you can refuel it pretty much anywhere you would want to go. Now let's dive into the whole electricity versus fuel economy myth. Consider a 10 year span of owning these two vehicles. A Nissan Versa with an average 12.5 thousand miles or 20 thousand kilometers annual mileage will go 125 thousand miles or 200 thousand kilometers in 10 years. Fuel-wise, the cost would be around 17.5 thousand dollars in gas, plus another two grand in maintenance. So during 10 years of ownership, the overall cost to own would be about 35 thousand dollars. And what about Nissan Leaf? You would need to fully charge your leaf about 85 times annually in order to go 12.5 thousand miles or 20 thousand kilometers. That comes to about 850 full charges during 10 years. One full charge is 40 kilowatt. The average cost of electricity in US is 12 cents per kilowatt per hour, which comes to about 4.5 dollars per charge or about 4 thousand dollars during 10 years of ownership. Let's assign not more than $1,000 for maintenance during these 10 years. As you can see, you end up paying approximately the same 35 grand for each car by the time 10 years go by. So it's nothing but a myth that EVs are cheaper long term. Yes, there are various types of rebates you can get to minimize the cost of ownership, but these programs diminish as more EVs are being produced. For instance, as of this moment, in Ontario such a rebate is cancelled, and rightfully so if you ask me, because these rebates are paid out from the taxes, which I pay as well. And why should I pay for a rebate that someone else gets? You can even minimize it further by charging the car only during off-peak hours and maximizing mileage 
by following best driving techniques, etc, etc, etc. However, that only adds more hassle to already inconvenient and relatively short mileage, more than twice shorter in fact, per charge and tank compared to Nissan Versa. Now of course, despite you end up paying approximately the same amount of money over 10 years for either car, consider that you would have to pay significantly more upfront for the Leaf rather than for Versa. Plus, you would still need to have a second or even a third car for the family to be able to travel anywhere distant. And this is just one of the most affordable EVs on the market. If we start moving up the chain to affordable Tesla Model 3 or Tesla Model X, the price gap becomes significantly bigger, as they currently start at $49,000 and $75,000 for base models. And we all know that in today's world, most people really care about immediate affordability before they care about environment or long-term cost savings. I've said it many times before and I'll keep saying it. Mass adoption of EVs will only begin when a comparable EV of the same class with the same equipment and same mile range as an internal combustion engine car will cost the same. And it will be as easy to find a charging station as a gas station. My most optimistic projection when this is going to happen is not before 2027, perhaps even 2030. That is, if during this time a much more efficient battery type is developed. But electric vehicles are good for the environment. Yeah, not as good as you think. You see, despite a huge effort for recycling the batteries, there's still a huge amount of waste that still goes into landfills. Also, in case you didn't know, the vast majority of world's electricity is still produced from fossil fuels, such as coal, oil and natural gas. And although renewable sources are on the rise, it will be a long time before they will take over. By the way, batteries is another pinnacle of EV development. There are approximately 1 billion cars on our planet at this moment. All of the EVs are currently equipped with some form of a lithium-ion battery, which is produced from rare earth minerals, and the production is extremely toxic. Also, every average 65 kilowatt lithium-ion battery requires 10 kilograms of lithium. So to produce 1 billion of those batteries to replace all the cars in the world will require about 10 million metric tons of lithium, which is quite problematic at this point. Yes, you can recycle the batteries, but the amount of useful materials deriving from the process is negligible. Of course, the change is not going to happen overnight. And I hope you understand that this is quite a process and it's not going to happen in the next five years as predicted by some experts. Meanwhile, there is a solution already out there, and it's been out there for quite a while now. Plug-in hybrids. It's a great compromise between ICE and EV. One of the most recognizable ones is the Chevrolet Volt. It costs $34,000 and has both an internal combustion engine, although they call it a generator, and a battery that allows it to travel about 50 miles or 80 kilometers on electricity alone and it doesn't need charging at all to drive if you don't have an option to charge it, because it can drive purely on gas. It has most of bells and whistles any contemporary car has. It has a remote start and a remote monitoring and control over the app in the smartphone. What this brilliant concept allows to do is to take advantage of an EV for daily driving, such as driving to and back from work, etc and at the same time to go on a long journey without any range anxiety and fear to be stuck in the middle of nowhere without fuel. And this is finally starting to get adopted in the most popular format vehicles these days, SUVs. And it absolutely should, because it's a great interim solution for the next decade for the time while EV charging station infrastructure is being expanded and new types of batteries developed. I still stand by my opinion. Elon Musk is a genius. He started the revolution. You can't stop it now. You just don't get it, old man. Yeah, whatever works for you, bud. Now as to the self-driving cars. What do you have against self-driving cars? There are already self-driving cars out there, you know? Again, I have nothing against them. And I know that there are autopilot Tesla cars that do a pretty good job driving on highways which is a huge achievement as far as I'm concerned. 
However, highways are mostly relatively straight multiple lane roads with no intersections, no traffic lights, and no oncoming traffic, which is fairly easy to navigate. This is a more or less ideal infrastructure to use autopilot in. But the trouble starts in cities with multiple intersections, traffic lights, overcomplicated rules, one-way streets, ongoing construction, temporary detours, repairs, etc., etc., etc. Besides, there are these horrible creatures called pedestrians. They are unpredictable, fragile, and generally don't care about their well-being or about what's going on around them. They just go as they please. They jaywalk, they're running at the last second, they're basically jumping under your car all the time. Can you imagine how much time, for example, it would take a self-driving car to turn right on a busy intersection where there are people crossing the street? And when they're not crossing, cars go. You have to be able to analyze the situation and use the opportunities, which cars are not yet programmed to do. This brings up another major deficiency of self-driving cars, reactionary function, where drivers use predictions and take precautions for defensive driving. For example, when I'm driving down the road, I know that there are a lot of people that don't care about signaling lane changes, turning or parking. Because I am aware of this, I am expecting every car to make a sudden move and cut me off. So I keep a safe distance, break ahead or change the lane to avoid collisions. A self-driving car would only react to other drivers' behavior, not act based on predictions. The only advantage here it would have is the reaction time, which will be much faster than that of a human. And yes, as technologies evolve, so will self-driving cars they will become better. I believe there will be time when a major step forward will be taken. Introducing communication between the cars and with infrastructure. That will help safety immensely. But it's a very long way to go. For God's sakes, have you seen the condition of roads in Toronto? They can't even get that thing resolved. So it's too early to think about self-driving car infrastructure yet. Will a self-driving car go around every pothole and choose better parts of a road? I sincerely doubt that. Besides, this technology is not even massively adopted in the first industry it fits perfectly. Railroads. I mean, a train just follows wherever a railroad leads. It doesn't even have to have a complicated mechanism for turning or avoiding collisions. It's basically forward, brake and backward. That's it. And railroads are already mostly equipped with automated signaling and warning systems to avoid collisions with other trains. But they can't even figure out a mass adoption of self-driving trains. You get the idea. Also, there is this issue of liability. Who's gonna be liable for damage or death? If I'm not driving my car, I will definitely not assume responsibility for killing someone or damaging someone's property in case of a collision. And I'm sure the manufacturer will only have limited liability. This means the whole insurance industry will need to adapt. That's a big deal. Has anyone ever told you how excruciatingly boring you are? Yeah, I'm very well aware of that. Still, someone has to enlighten people, right? Well, my time's almost up, so goodbye me. Wait, could you maybe let me know a couple of winning number combinations for some lotteries so I could, you know, significantly improve my life financially? Nah, it doesn't work like that, buddy. This is not back to the future. Oh well. Better luck next time, I guess. Oh, believe me, I'm not happy about that either. Remember, if you become rich, I become rich. So... Anyway... Best of luck in all your future endeavors. So long, partner. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat educational. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe and bell buttons for more videos on this channel. And as always, drive safe, use your turn signals and remember, anything is possible with the right tools and motivation. See you next time.